Have we had a tremendous time already? Why don't you stand all across this sanctuary? Why don't you speak a blessing over somebody close to you right now? Why don't you tell them the blessing and the favor of the Lord is upon you? Come on, there's anointing in this place today. Whatever you need God to take care of, He is able to take care of. If anybody believes that, somebody lift your voice and shout yes. Amen, amen, amen. Worship with us this morning. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. For anyone who's ever seen the mountain of their sins just disappear. Anybody seen that this morning? For anyone who's ever felt the hand of heaven reach down through their fear and dry their tears. For anyone who's ever found through their lives, hallelujah, then you'll understand the reason for why the saints of God make it. reached down and said I don't care if you're messed up I don't care if you're if you're what the world would consider wasted I can make something new the Bible says that if any man is in Christ he is a new creature see nobody has creative power like Jesus does I'm thankful for that this morning amen come on lift your voice and sing my past erased my name he changed let's testify in my past erased my name is changed let's testify
Come on, somebody testify. Somebody put your hands together and testify. How many say for that your past has been erased? How many say for that your name has been changed? Yay! Come on, I think we can do better than that. Somebody give God glory. Because what you were, you no longer are. What you used to be, you're not that anymore. My God, my God. What a wonderful spirit is in the house of the Lord today. Amen. God bless you. You may be seated. Thank you for worshiping God. We are looking forward to what's going to happen for the rest of the service today. How many enjoyed the word of the, the word of the Lord that came last night through Brother Jerry Jones? Come on, somebody. I don't want to be that missing man. And we're going to, in just a few moments after our worship set, we are going to hear once again from Brother Jerry Jones. What an amazing minister of the gospel. And he has all that I can, all of, of my life that I can remember listening every time I would hear Jerry Jones speak at a conference, youth convention, youth camp, no matter what it was, he has never ministered where. I did not leave with my life drastically changed and impacted by the Word of God, not one time, and that's because God has used him. And I believe God's going to use him again today. Don't you agree? Amen. So in just a few moments after we worship the Lord, God is going to do a great, great work, amen, through him yet again today. I want to acknowledge we have another missionary here today. Uh, appointed to South Africa, Caleb Tipsord. We're glad here. Why don't you stand? Amen, Brother Caleb Tipsord. Let's give him a great big hand today. We appreciate him being here with us. And obviously, Brother Raymond Mason that we met last night. And uh, these incredible men of God have PIM forms that are available out in the lobby in the foyer area when you leave this sanctuary, if you will go to the church in a day booth, pick up a PIM form and support these missionaries. How many are thankful? Say, so, you know what? You, can, you may not be able to go to obviously Ukraine or, or South Africa, or any, but, but if you can help them and financially support them, you are going in a sense and pray for them. You are going to help spread the gospel. How many are thankful for these men? We honor you so very much. So let's be a help. Let's be a help to them. Also, we would love for you to stop by the booths when you leave here today. Do not leave here without stopping by. One in particular is the Man Up booth, and this is a, a wonderful, you'll see the tent setting outside. Stop by there. This is an amazing experience where you can hike and camp, trek up into the mountains, beautiful places, Wyoming, places like that. You can trek up in the mountains and then uh, just enjoy the presence of the Lord. It's a great time, so we encourage you to stop by the booth. Brother Daryl Cooper, if you have any questions, you can talk to Brother Daryl Cooper, and he will answer your questions, but I know that you will be blessed if you stop by that booth. Also, Church in a Day. Again, stop by that booth. Amen. We're thankful for Church in a Day, being able to build a church in a day. What an amazing feat. And we need people. We need boots on the ground and people to help with this. So please stop by that booth. Amen. And I know you will be blessed. How many enjoy men's conference? I mean, genuinely enjoy men's conference. What a life-changing experience. So next year, everybody say next year. 2023 men's conference is going to come right back here to Calvary Tabernacle in Indianapolis. Thank you, Pastor Carson, your staff, your team for making everybody feel so welcome. We are coming right back here. This is the second weekend in March, and we are going to be blessed. Oh, are we going to be blessed by the ministry of Brother Harold Hoffman from Michigan. We are so thankful. Amen. Aren't you excited about that? So make plans now. 
to attend. I want you to stand with me right now, and we're getting ready to worship the Lord. We want the worship team to come, get in place, and lead us in worship. And I wonder before we do this, if we could lift our hands all over this place, and if we can ask the presence of the Lord to join us once again. He's already here, but I want him to join us, not just in this sanctuary, but we want God to join us in our heart and in our spirit. Lift your hands, and if you'll lift your voices right now and say, God, prepare my heart as I worship you. Prepare me for your word. Prepare me for the anointing, amen, of your spirit to come into me right now. Come on, lift your voice, men, and let's worship the Lord together. Oh, come on, why don't we lift up a shout of praise all across this place? Why don't we raise a hallelujah, the highest praise to the King of Kings and to the Lord of Lords. Come on, everybody. I raise a hallelujah in the presence of my enemies. And I raise a hallelujah louder than the unbelief. I raise a
to our churches, to our communities. And we need to leave changed. And the greatest thing that I can imagine that we could walk away from is knowing this. Though the world around me seems to be crumbling, I put my trust in one. Why don't we love him right now? Can we do that? Increase your faith in this place right now. Hallelujah. The mountains shake before the demons run and flee. At the mention of the name, King of Majesty.
That's it, Indiana man. Give the Lord a hand clap of praise. Let's lift up his name in this place. There is no one more worthy. There is no one more righteous. There is no one that stands above our God. There is none before him. There is none after him. There is none beside him. There's none more powerful. There's none greater. Let's lift up his name in this place. Brother Jerry Jones is about to come and preach to us. But I want us to wait on the Lord here for a second. There are some of you, you've come into this place with situations that you can't see a way out. You don't know how to get out of it. You don't know how to overcome it. But God is here. And if we wait on his presence, if we let him work, if we let him move, if we open our hearts to him, if we say, Lord, I can't do it. God, I can't handle the situation. He will come in. He will work. He will move. But we must first wait on his spirit. So as we begin this song, I wish we could just lift our hands and allow the spirit of God just to begin to work to begin to speak to us in the name of Jesus. There's not a mountain too tall. There's not a problem so small that Jesus can't resolve in time and get involved. He's our God. He cares about us. That's it, man. Wait on the Lord Wait on the Lord You
I don't know how I'm gonna get through I'm gonna get out the Lord I'm waiting on you Jesus I'm waiting on you Jesus I don't know what to do But I'm just gonna wait I'm just gonna wait I'm gonna wait Yes, yes, yes So I'm gonna wait on you Jesus I'm gonna wait on you Jesus I'm gonna wait on you, Jesus. I'm gonna wait on you, Jesus. I'm not turning back now. I'm not turning back now. I'm not turning. Let's worship him. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Jesus. 
Thank you, Jesus. Let's just do that a moment. Whatever you're going through, whatever you're struggling with, let's just lift our hands and expect a visitation of his great presence in our lives today. Oh, hallelujah. 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 Let me say what a joy it's been, what a, what a privilege and pleasure to be part of this men's conference. I'm so thankful for the incredible presence of God that is here. He wasn't waiting for us here. You brought him with you. He's going to go home with you. He's going to be there for every situation you'll ever face. He'll, he'll stand by you closer than a brother. He'll stand by you. Amen. My apologies to the audiovisual people. Forget what I told you earlier. Make the slide up as we go along. <laughs> My text today will come from Micah in the Old Testament. Very familiar verse of scripture. The seventh chapter and the eighth verse. Micah seven and eight. Thank you again. The leadership, Brother Arrowwood, men's ministry, the district leadership, and of course, Pastor. Thank you for all your hospitality. Rejoice not against me. Oh, mine enemy. When I fall, I shall arise. When I sit, that's going to happen. And it doesn't matter that it happens. It matters what you do after it happens. The prophet's already setting the, the, the boundaries. He's already saying, I'm a man. I struggle sometimes. My faith grows weak. But when I fall, I shall arise. And when I sit in darkness, the Lord shall be a light unto me. God bless you. Thank you. Please be seated. After the Battle of Chancellorsville during our Civil War. The ground was still strewn with the wounded and the dead. The mists of battle still hung over the battlefield. A Confederate cavalryman, his name was Allie Clack, was carefully and gingerly leading his horse riding it across the battlefield doing everything he could to avoid the moaning and crying men and those who lay still in death but he was determined Clack had heard that Union soldiers had something that he desperately wanted and needed it was a waterproof blanket the South had no such thing. And when they rigged their little shelters in the rain, it simply dripped through. But if he could find one of those blankets, one of those waterproof blankets, what a blessing that would be. After a while, he spies one. It's mounted, tied at each corner. To a musket that is leaning outward, holding it up as a shelter. He sees the blue clad legs that project out from under that blanket. He feels sorry for that soldier, but he wants that blanket. So he rides up to it, he dismounts, and he walks over and he begins untying one corner of that blanket. 
when from beneath that blanket comes a voice. It says, I ain't dead yet. Allie wrote his wife about it. That's how we know about it. He wrote, I was dreadfully startled. But I managed to say, sorry, sir, I thought you was dead. And I got on my horse and I rode away as fast as I could go. That's what I'm going to preach about today. I ain't dead yet. I may be down, but I ain't out. I may be losing the battle, but the battle's not over yet. I ain't dead yet. Why are we so surprised when the devil acts like the devil? That's what he is. He's Satan, Lucifer. He's the devil. He's a liar. He's a deceiver, an accuser, a discourager. That's what he does. It ought not shock us that he knows us. He knows us. And he's scared of us. Because if we ever realize who we are and what we've got, if we ever realize that we were brought to the kingdom for such a time as this, that we are not victims, we are victors. That if we realize he that is in us is greater than he that is in the world, then the devil's in big trouble in Indiana. So he works over time. He's not that concerned about the streetwalker downtown. He's not that concerned about the drunkard. He's not that concerned about the drug addict. But he's concerned about a child of God, a man of God, who stands for right and stands for truth. And he will do anything. He's against you and me. He wants not just to make it inconvenient. He's not just interested in making us sweat a bit. He wants to devour us. To destroy us. His greatest triumph is not that streetwalker, that drunkard, that drug addict. That's not his greatest triumph. It's when a saint of God, a child of God, throws up his hands and gives up and says, I ain't going back. It didn't work for me. There's too many problems. I thought it would be different. I thought there'd be more joy. I thought it would be easier when I gave my life to God, but it's been harder. So I quit. That's when hell rejoices. So he will cover you with condemnation. He'll point out everybody's mistakes. All the shortcut people. All the folks that aren't what they claim to be. He'll send sickness. He'll tell you the church doesn't really care about you. He'll tell you the pastor doesn't really care about you. He'll tell any lie that he can tell to discourage you and to destroy you. In fact, I'm going to tell you something. This is a little secret. I'm just telling you, just my friends, that's all. I'm sharing it with you. Are you ready? There's only one way to make it. Don't give up. If you fail, get back up and try again. If you get knocked down, catch your breath, then get back from the mat and get your gloves up and get back in the fight. Just don't quit. I want to tell the devil something today. Excuse me, I'm talking to him. Devil, I ain't dead yet. You've done everything you can. You've challenged my faith. You've challenged my confidence. You've brought grief into my life. But I'm going to tell you, I ain't dead yet. I haven't quit yet. I'm not giving up. I'm not going back. I'm not dead yet. You 
hear me when I fall? And I fall. We all have our struggles. We lost our son. I don't even, I don't even talk. Like to, we lost our son this past year. There was not a day in that boy's 36 years that he was not prayed for. There was not a moment that people did not remind him that life could be better, that there was something worth living out there. He chose his path, and I had confidence. I believed those prayers would bring deliverance. I believed that God would honor the sacrifices of his mother and I. I believed that, but it didn't happen. He left this world, and our hearts were broken, but I want to tell the devil, if you thought that would make us give up, you're wrong. I wish it had been different, and I've had my dark nights, but let me tell you, devil, I ain't dead yet I'm still in the fight I'm not quitting I don't understand it I'll never understand it but I promise you one thing when I draw my last breath the name of Jesus will be on my heart and my mind I'm not dead Somebody here today needs to crawl out. Somebody here today needs to come out of the cave. Somebody here today needs to get up and believe. Yes, I'm sitting in darkness. Yes, I'm down in the dumps. But remember one thing. When I fall, I shall arise. You just got to decide. I ain't going to quit. Might make a mess, but I ain't going to quit. I might fail of the mark, but I ain't going to quit. I'm going to keep trying. I ain't dead yet. Somebody needs to say that right now and say it loud. I ain't dead yet. I ain't dead yet. It's not over yet. The battle is not decided. Victory is still within our grasp. I'm not dead yet. Paul was the example. We see this lived out in the life of the great apostle. <laughs> Started very early. The first missionary journey. He goes to a town called Lystra. They don't like him much in Lystra. But now he, you know, he, he had already been the target. You know, when the devil's really scared of you, he really goes after you. If he ain't bothering you, you need to check up and see. If he ain't worried about you, you're, you're missing a little something somewhere. You get, you get to where you pray every day. You read the Bible every day. And you, you fast a little bit along. You'll get his attention. I mean, it started right at Paul's conversion. I mean, let's think about it. But let me back up a minute. Right at his conversion. He's still in Damascus. He's probably still living on the street called Straight in Ananias' house. He just got the Holy Ghost, just got healed, just got baptized in Jesus' name. And a bunch of guys got together and said, we're going to kill him. The devil said, I ain't putting up with this. No, no, he was firmly in my camp, and now he's going over to the other side. And I know what he can do. I know his talent. I know his ability. And I know his commitment. So I'm just going to kill him while he's still a baby. 
So they're hanging around. They're hanging around the gate, Damascus. They got their knives. They're ready to kill him. When that guy walks out, he's, he's done. It's over. But somebody told somebody in the church, we're going to kill Paul. Saul, we're going to kill him. <laughs> they said, uh-uh. He's a new convert, and we're scared to death of him. We're afraid he's a fake, but we're not sure. So they got a basket, and they put Paul in the basket. Have you ever thought what was in that basket? Two-thirds of the New Testament was in that basket. Romans, Corinthians, Ephesians, Galatians. Philippians, they're all in that basket. Revival in Philippi. Revival at Corinth. Revival in Rome itself. All of it's in that basket. They got some young Bible school guys. They got ropes tied to that basket. And they lowered him over the wall. And Paul stepped out of that basket. And he takes off in the darkness toward Arabia. And as he's walking away, or maybe riding a horse, I don't know. But as he's heading out, he looks toward the front gate. And he sees the glint of those knives. And he says, devil, I ain't dead yet. <laughs> he hangs in Arabia for two years studying the word of God until he's got it. He goes to Jerusalem and meets with the apostles. And there he compares and says, I'm preaching what they're preaching. It's one God and one gospel. He's called a missionary journey and him and Barnabas are in Lystra and Paul goes to the synagogue and preaches that one God message. He preaches that one gospel and they said, we're going to kill him. And they grab him and they drag him out of town and they start throwing rocks and they knock him down and they bloody his head and he's, he's laying there perhaps under a pile of rocks. And it looks like he's dead. First shot. First missionary journey. Nothing written yet. He, they know he's dead. The people that love him, the church members, they, they start to leave. He's gone. Preacher's gone. They turn their backs and start to walk away and they hear something moving. And a bloody hand comes up through those rocks, starts pushing them out of the way. And Paul stands up and he heads back toward the city. And while he's walking, I hear him say, ain't dead yet. Ain't dead yet. Got another message to preach. Got another song to sing. I got another revival to start. Over and over again. You know the difference between the devil and some saints? I mean, besides the obvious. The devil don't give up. He don't care how hard it gets. He don't care how bad it is. He's going to just keep on being the devil. Every time we defeat him, he just gets back up. Yeah, they stoned him. He should have been dead. Boy, this preacher's hard to kill. But I ain't quitting. I'm going to kill him. I'm going to get over and over again. I mean, think about it. He's in Jerusalem. A riot, a, a fake riot is started. It, it's the cover for one event. They don't care that Timothy's father was a Greek. They don't care that Timothy went in. That's not the point. That's not the reason. It was a cover to kill Paul.
what I like about this one. Oh, I really do. Is they took a vow. We won't eat or drink until Paul is dead. <laughs> Not smart. <laughs> Not smart. They try to get to him in the melee. They try to get to him in the chaos of that, of that riot. They should have made it. There's no reason Paul should have lived except there's a God that when I sit in darkness, God will be a light. And you don't believe God has a sense of humor, then you never read this story. Because the way he saves Paul's life, he sends 200 Roman soldiers, not Jewish soldiers, not Christian soldiers. He brings 200 Roman soldiers marching through that riot. Throwing people right and left. People with knives ready to kill Paul. But they march between Paul and his killers. And they surround Paul. They're on every side of him. Paul's grinning. He's no dummy. They get a horse. And they put Paul up on the horse and they surround the horse and they lead him out of that riot, out of Jerusalem, on the way to Caesarea and on the way out the gate. Paul looks at those already hungry and thirsty assassins, their faces blanched, their eyes sunk in their heads and Paul yells, Ain't dead yet. Two years in Caesarea, and then he appeals to Rome, being a Roman citizen, and they put him on a ship, and they send him to Rome, and it's the wrong time of the year, and a storm so bad that it lasted two weeks. There's no hope. The soldiers figure it's over. We're all going to die. And then Paul grabs a hold of the mast. And he yells out for everyone to hear above the din of the storm. He says, the God whose I am and whom I serve has sent his angel and told me this night, you go into Rome. And no hurricane's going to stop it. And God will give you everybody that'll stay with the ship. Just stay with the ship. That's all you got to do. Just stay with the boat. This old ship of Zion has been sailing for 2,000 years. It's sailed through storms and riots and blood and sacrifice. But hear this preacher. She is sailing on. Just get with the ship and hang on. But wait a minute, Brother Jones. Didn't that ship break up? Hit some rocks at the island of Melita. Disintegrated into the stormy waters. But Paul, last words. I don't care what shape she's in. Just stay with the ship. She may just be pieces floating in the water. But there's safety with the ship. Stay in the ship. 
Maybe your family's almost wrecked. Maybe your church is in trouble. Maybe your ministry is almost a dream instead of a reality. I don't care what's going on. Just hang on to a piece. Just get a hold of a piece of a board or get a hold of a piece of a mast. Just get a hold of this boat, no matter what shape, and stay with the boat. And the pieces washed up on shore, and the men were washed up with them, and not one soul was lost because they stayed with the ship. Everybody's cold and wet and seawater. So Paul starts a, a fire there on the beach for everybody to. Gather around, get warm. Makes sense, right? So he's out gathering wood. You know, if you got a fire, you want to keep it going. Build it up. People are cold. People are wet. People need a fire. So he's getting some firewood. And he's walking back toward the fire. And when he throws that wood on the fire, a viper comes out of that firewood and latches on to Paul's hand. And the pagan folks on that island, they, they, in their wisdom and experience, well, the sea missed him, but the snake got him. And the Bible says they watch him. Go swell up. He's going to swell up. That hand going to turn black. It's going to go up his arm. When it hits his heart, it's over. And they watch him. He stands there a minute, looks at that snake, and shakes it off in the fire. Best thing to do with a snake. Get you a fire going. And when the snake shows up, shake him off in the fire. Maybe he's got a latch on you. Maybe he sunk his fangs in you. But don't run screaming from the fire. Stay by the fire and shake him off in the fire. And they watch. And they watch. Paul goes, gets another load of wood. Puts it on the fire. Ain't worried about snakes. Dealt with snakes before. Got me a fire. Come on. Come on, snake. Got me a fire. But I know there was a moment when all the island folks, are, are, their eyes are riveted on Paul. He gonna die. Sea missed him. Snake got him. Paul puts that second load of wood on the fire. And there had to be that moment that he looks at that crowd and he smiles. <laughs> Ain't dead yet. That snake's dead, but I'm not. I ain't dead yet. I want to tell you something. You can't be defeated unless you quit. You can't lose unless you give up, unless you throw in the towel, unless you say no mas. As long as you keep the gloves up, as long as you stay in the ring, victory is assured. You cannot lose if you just don't quit. Stand with me. Stand with me. I got to stop. But wait a minute, Brother Joe. Didn't they get him in the end? I mean, didn't they cut his head off? Yeah. Yeah, they did. They did. But it ain't what you think. Listen to these words he wrote to Timothy. That little boy beside the river. That Paul became his daddy. He wrote him. 
possibly days or even hours before the footsteps of those came down the corridor of the prison. Before the door creaked open, he was led to the execution place. <laughs> he writes these words. But watch thou in all things. Keep an eye out. Endure afflictions. Do the work of an evangelist. Make full proof of thy ministry. These are last words. For I am now ready. I wasn't ready at Damascus. <laughs> I, I wasn't ready at Lystra. No, no, didn't get me there. I wasn't ready at Philippi. I, I wasn't ready in that ship on the ocean. I wasn't ready when the snake bit me, just shook him off. But I'm ready now. I don't go on your terms, devil. You don't dictate my fate. You don't decide when I'm done. No, I've got a master. My life is in his hands. He's got a plan for me. And I ain't leaving until he takes me home. I ain't quitting. For I am now ready. <laughs> the time of my departure is at hand. I have fought a good fight. I have finished my course. I have kept the faith. Henceforth, there's laid up for me a crown of righteousness, which the Lord, that righteous judge, shall give me in that day, and not to me only, but unto all them that love his appearing. And they led him out, and they lay him down, his head upon the chopping block. And this great life came to an end here. But I secretly believed he was smiling when the ax fell. Because when he drew his last breath here, he drew his first breath over there. And I believe when he closed his eyes here, he immediately opened them over there. And the face he saw was the face of his master. Jesus said, didn't send Gabriel, didn't send Michael. I came myself. I wanted to say, welcome home, my good and faithful servant. Enter thou into the joys of the Lord. I want to give you the VIP tour, Paul. Follow me. And Paul fell in behind our Jesus on his way to see what I hath not seen and here hath not heard. But I'm sorry. I, I just got to believe that just before he disappeared into the shimmering glory of our eternal home. He looked back one more time. And he grinned real big. He said, devil, I ain't dead yet. Now I'm alive forever and ever and ever. I don't care what you're going through. I mean, I care, but it doesn't matter what you're going through. Just tell the devil, I ain't dead yet. They couldn't yet. You need to go home and walk into your house, maybe under your breath, because you don't want to be misunderstood, but maybe you want to walk across the threshold of your door and say, devil, the old problems, the difficulties, the pain, the loss. Yeah, I know it's still here, but I ain't dead yet. I'm not quitting. I'm going to make it. I'm going to make it. I don't have time to tell you about others. How about old Job? 
I lost everything. I lost my kids. I lost my wife. I lost, I lost my riches. I lost my reputation. I lost everything. God, would you come down here? I want to plead my case. I have nothing left. But I know my Redeemer liveth. And though the skin worms devour my flesh, in my flesh, I'm going to see him. I ain't dead yet. Not yet. And he lay three days in a borrowed tomb. The book says he descended into Hades, the abode of the dead. I don't know if it happened like this, but I've always wanted to believe. They're having a party in hell. We got him. Missed him on the mountain. Missed him at Nazareth. But we got him. Got him on the cross. And in the midst of the revelry, the laughter, the singing, the claims of victory, there came a knocking at the door. Who could that be? The knocking became more insistent. Devil said, better open the door. He's going to break it down if you don't. And they opened the door. Yeah. He had nail scars in his hand. Yeah, the blood from the crown was still visible on his face. And yet his side was riven. But the devil's eyes got wide as Jesus walked in. I'll take the keys. I want the keys of death, hell, and the grave. You had them long enough. They're mine now. He took the keys out of the devil's hand in silence as he walked back out of the throne room of hell. And he got to that door and he looked back and said, by the way, I ain't dead yet. That's all it takes. No matter how bad it gets. So make your minds up today. It is going to get bad. There'll be, there'll be pain almost unendurable. But he'll never put more on you than you can bear. But he will, with the temptation, make a door of escape. Your heart may be slowed and your breath may be laborious. But hear me. Just get up and walk through that door. And say, I'm not dead yet. I'm just not going to quit. I can't see. I can't hear. I don't understand. I don't get it. But I know this. My Redeemer liveth. I can't find him. I've looked to both sides and behind him before. And I, I can't reach him right now. But I know he's there. And I'm just going to keep doing what I know to do. I'm just not going to quit. So if you'd like to decide. If you'd like to make up your mind today. Just before we go home. It's not just going to be preaching and, and a good meeting and people shouting and beautiful music and, and, all, and all wonderful. That's not going to be it. It's not going to stop there. I'm just going to make up my mind. Doesn't matter what happens, who goes back. 
what it costs, what it takes, how bad it hurts. I'm just not going to quit. That's all, Pastor. You can count on me. I'm not going to quit. Family, you can count on me. I don't have the answers, but I know one thing. I'm just not going to quit. I'm not dead yet. It's not over yet. It isn't finished yet. Let's reach for him right now across this building. Maybe you'll want to join with someone near you in prayer. Maybe make a commitment to each other. I'm just going to make it. I'm just going to stay with it. I'm going to keep going to church and reading my Bible. I'm going to keep praying. I'm going to keep singing, keep worshiping. I'm just not going to quit. Jesus. I ain't dead yet. I'm gonna see I ain't dead yet. I'm gonna see I ain't dead yet. Heart still beating, lungs still pumping. I ain't dead. Not yet. Not just yet. Jesus. Jesus. Make the promise to him. Make the commitment to Jesus. I'm going to hang on. I'm going to hang on. I'm not going to quit. I'm going to see
Join with me and pray for Steve right now. Steve's been in a Bible study and made the decision to be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ. Would you stretch your hands forward towards Steve right now? God, we pray that you would guard and keep him, that this step he's taking in his journey, that you would lead him forward from this moment. I thank you, God, for the process to be buried with you in baptism. We pray for Steve specifically as these sins are remitted by the confession of his faith and being buried with you in baptism as he takes on the name of Jesus Christ. I pray you'd give him great revival. Let him be full of the Holy Ghost. Let him lead others to the gospel completely. We ask it in the name of Jesus. Upon your confession of faith, it is my honor to baptize you in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of your sins, and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. Would you express to the man of God your gratitude for this word that we've heard tonight? Amen. And I think it would be a blessing if in the days to come you just 
say a, a special prayer, an added prayer for Brother Jerry Jones for the sacrifices that he makes, has made for so many years, preaching to this great group of people across our world. Amen. 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 And while, and while we're talking about praying for men of God, pray for your pastor. Hold them up. Amen. They make a great sacrifice for us. Amen. I'm glad to have my pastor, Larry Arrowwood, here with us tonight. Great man of God. And I am so grateful to each and every one of you for taking the time to be at men's conference. It has been a wonderful time. Brother Carson, thank you again for you and your staff here at Calvary Tabernacle. You guys have been absolutely awesome, and we are grateful. God bless you. Drive careful. Go in peace. You're dismissed in Jesus' name.